This is Team 4D's presentation on RTEMS for the Real-Time Systems course at TU Delft. RTEMS stands for Real-Time Executive for Multiprocessor Systems. RTEMS is an open source real-time operating system, which has been developed since the late 80s. It has many different application domains. For example, it has been used by NASA in space. It supports a variety of processor architectures, such as ARM, Intel, and PowerPC. RTEMS comes with a bunch of features. Firstly, it is multi-threaded. It uses a single address space, and there is no kernel space user space separation. So these are both one. Then there is support for various APIs. There is support for multiple device drivers and there's support for many different tasks. There's also a plugin framework for scheduling algorithms, and we're gonna discuss that uh, later on. So how do you actually use RTEMS? Well, on the right, we have included an example of a Hello World program. This is written in C. And at the top, the RTEMS library is included. Then a task is initialized with some arguments or parameters. The execution body is then implemented. In this case, uh, a hello world string is printed and the task is exited. Then at the end of the file, the application configuration is set. All right, let's take a look at the RTEMS kernel architecture. So basically, uh, RTEMS is built as a set of components that are layered, and each component provides services to an application. Uh, an application can access these services through a resource manager, and these resource managers are interfaces that are formed by grouping uh, functions together into a single set. So, for instance, when you look at the figure on the right, you can see that uh, there's a task manager, it's a resource manager that groups uh, task related functions together. And then there is the RTEM score and the RTEM score basically contains functions that are shared between all the all these components. So between these uh, resource managers, and it is independent in the sense that it only depends on certain CPU routines. Now, let's move on to the topic of tasks. How are tasks created and managed in the RTEMS real-time operating system? Well, a very important data structure in RTEMS are task control blocks, which are abbreviated as TCB. A task control block is a data structure containing all necessary information related to executing a task. Some examples of what a task control block contains are task data such as a task's name, its priority, or its ID. Tasks in RTEMS are created using the task manager, and specifically by calling the task create sequence with the desired parameters of a task. After a task is created uh, using task create, RTEMS allocates a task control block, and the task is in a dormant state until it is made ready to execute using the task start directive. So there are various types of tasks in RTEMS. It supports both periodic and sporadic uh, tasks, but with periodic tasks, the, they are not defined explicitly. So you have to create a rate monotonic uh, period using the rate monotonic manager. And Additionally, a task has a, has a task mode, and this is used to alter the execution of the tasks and to modify the scheduling process. So for example, preemption and time slicing can be enabled or disabled, and an interrupt level can be set. Uh, so this is how RTM supports many different uh, types of tasks. So let's take a look at how RTM handles drivers. Uh, well, basically, the input output IO manager handles the accessing of device drivers. So this includes reading and writing to a driver. Now drivers can be found in the device driver table 
and an application specifies the address of this table in its configuration table, uh, so then RTEMS will initialize the drivers that are contained within it. Now, to call to a driver with the I.O. manager, an application must specify a so-called major and minor driver number. And the major number is simply the index of the driver in the device driver table, but the minor number really depends on the, on the driver. Uh, so then adding a new driver uh, goes as follows. Uh, an application calls IO register driver of the IO manager, and then optionally specifies uh, a major number. And so then uh, this driver will be added to the device driver table at the specified uh, index or the major number. Uh, but if no major number is supplied, then it will simply take the next available index and return the, the major uh, number. Uh, a name can also be associated to uh, the driver using IO register name, and the driver can also be initialized using IO initialize. Okay, that's great. But which scheduling policies are included in RTEMS, and how were they implemented? RTEMS uses a plugin framework for the implementation of scheduling algorithms. And this plugin framework offers a number of benefits. One benefit is that the user can select desired scheduling algorithms at link time. And another benefit is that thanks to this plugin framework, users can implement their own scheduling algorithms and use these in RTEMS. RTEMS includes a variety of schedulers some uniprocessor and some SMP. And the ones included can be seen on this slide. Next, let's move on to the topic of tracing and debugging in RTEMS. The RTEMS trace project has several components, such as the RTEMS trace linker. The RTEMS trace linker is used to generate trace records for user-specified functions. Another component of the RTEMS trace project, the capture engine, is used to generate CTF files, which can be visualized using tools like Trade Compass. Regarding debugging in RTEMS, in order to debug an RTEMS executable, it needs to be built with compiler and linker options enabled. RTEMS supports numerous GDB and GDB server environments, such as OpenOCD. Moreover, the RTEMS kernel provides a debugging agent called libdebugger which provides a remote GDB interface. All right, let's take a look at how mutual exclusion is handled in RTEMS. So basically it's provided through the semaphore manager and this uses Dijkstra counting semaphores. So it supports both binary and counting semaphores and it also provides a set of directives which are then used to create, release, delete or set the priority of a semaphore. And there is a, a directive called the semaphore flush, and this basically unblocks all the tasks waiting on the semaphore. And so we have arrived at the end of this presentation, and we hope that you enjoyed uh, listening, that you found it informative, and uh, we hope that you have a good day.